Um, I want to talk about this gene called P53. It's not a very glamorous name for a gene, but it's an important gene. Let me uh, have you write down this gene's nickname. It has a nickname. It's called the guardian of the genome. Guardian of the genome. Anybody know what a genome is? It's not a surprised elf. Yeah. Yes, it's all your DNA. Your genome is all your DNA. Okay. So if I if I uh, if I pluck out uh, one skin cell right here, let's not pluck one skin cell. All right, there's a little nucleus inside that cell, right? Inside that nucleus are how many chromosomes? 46. 46. And all the DNA in those 46 chromosomes is my genome. So I have a complete copy of my entire genome, my entire recipe in each nucleus, each cell in my body. That's what a genome is, okay? So P53 has this Pretty cool nickname. It's the guardian of the genome because it's in a class of genes that we call, and I'm going to put this in parentheses, tumor suppressor genes. <laughs> it's an example, a very important example, of a tumor suppressor gene. A gene that is responsible for keeping tumors down for preventing tumors. That sounds pretty important, right? The guardian of the genome. You know how you guys can do t-shirts if you want to for uh, outside of class activities? Remember I told you about that? The first t-shirts would be due at the end of the nine weeks. And that's where you would come in and model your t-shirts that you've designed and decorated. I remember one year somebody did one that said, on the back, have you thanked your P53 genes today? I thought that was pretty cool. We should make bumper stickers, <coughs> maybe. Sell them. Actually, every time I see a bumper sticker, I think of a quote. Fanaticism is always a sign of repressed doubt. Anyway, just think about that a little bit. I see you're really impressed. Okay, moving right along. <laughs> P53. Uh, right here, I want, to I want you to see where P53 is located. Here's a colorful karyotype of somebody. Right here, chromosome pair number 17. And here's an enlarged view of one of those chromosome 17s. See, that P53 gene is located right there, right at the top of chromosome 17. And since you've got two chromosome 17s, one from mama, one from dad, you've got two copies of that gene, right? In every cell in your body, P53. Now, has anybody asked you today in the hallways anywhere, what does P53 do? Nobody's asked you that, Emily? Nobody? Does anybody know what it does specifically? Does it um, stop the replication process? Yeah, yeah. Here, it's a tumor suppressor gene. Here's what it does. When a cell's going through the cell cycle, moving along through G1, just doing what cells do, like if it's a skin cell, it's just being a skin cell. Moving along through G1, before the cell replicates all of its DNA in the S phase, P53 is a gene that works right about here. And basically what that gene does, in common everyday language, it puts the brakes on the cell cycle. It's like, whoa, stop. It halts the cell cycle for a little bit right here. And it doesn't allow the cell to proceed on into the S phase until other genes that make other enzymes 
examine all the DNA in the nucleus and check for damage. Okay? That's what happens. And if there's any damage to DNA, there are these little enzymes, little protein molecules called repair enzymes, and they repair any damaged DNA. And once the damage is repaired, then P53 lets up on the brake and allows the, uh, the cell to replicate all of its DNA and then to eventually go through mitosis and become two cells. Now that's really, really important, that role P53 plays. Why would you not want a cell with damaged DNA to go ahead and replicate all of its DNA and then divide in two by mitosis and make two cells with damaged DNA? Why would you not want that? Anybody have any idea? Isaac? Because then you just have a bunch of floating cells which make tissue that don't really do anything. You'd have, it there. Okay, you'd have a bunch of cells with damaged DNA for sure. And cells that have their DNA damaged are likely to become cancer cells. Okay? That's why you don't want to damage the DNA in your cells. A cell with damaged DNA can become a cancer cell, which is, you know, that's a horrible thing, right? Most cancers start with one cell that gets its DNA damaged for some reason and becomes a cancer cell. And then it divides in two and becomes two cells, and then four, and then eight, and 16, and so on. Pretty soon you get a tumor, okay? So, do you see why P53 is important? Now, here's something else that's kind of interesting about P53. Now, now P53 as a gene, of course, it doesn't talk. But if it could talk, it might say something like this. Cells coming through in the cell cycle, gets ready to replicate its DNA. P53 tells all the other genes, stop, we need to examine the DNA first before we allow it to replicate. And like I said, those repair enzymes come in, repair any damaged DNA. If the DNA is damaged beyond repair, but can't be fixed, you know what P53 does? It instructs the cell to self-destruct, <coughs> right. If the damage in the DNA is so severe that it's damaged beyond repair, P53 instructs that cell to undergo apoptosis and it self-destructs. And that's a good thing. Because you don't want a cell with damaged DNA to do mitosis and replicate and make two cells with damaged DNA. You see what I mean? Muy importante, P53. Very important. The guardian of the genome. Now, Does that make sense? Sort of. Mm -hmm. Apoptosis. Apoptosis. You know, there's something a lot of people don't know about. I want to show you here. This goes way back to when they used to put cigarette advertisements in magazines probably not seen that in the magazine lately, right? <clears throat> in fact, this goes so far back, I don't remember the exact year. Down here it says, Surgeon General's warning, cigarette smoke contains carbon monoxide. Well, it says a whole lot more than that now. Now, I have, actually have not read a pack of cigarettes lately. You know why? Because you don't smoke. I don't smoke. Okay. <laughs> but on a pack of nowadays, I think it says something like, Surgeon General's warning, cigarette smoke causes cancer, something like that. I mean, it's obvious now. And a lot of people running around don't realize that cigarette smoke has a chemical in it. Well, it's got a lot of chemicals in it. One of them is a chemical called benzopyrene. And what benzopyrene does is it damages this gene right here. It mutates this gene right here, P53, so that it can't do its job. All right, so, okay, imagine somebody smokes for 30 years. Just, just imagine. <coughs> and 
and uh, they've got these, uh, of course, their lungs and their trachea and all that's made up of cells, right? And the cells lining the lungs, each cell has two copies of P53 in it. And somebody smokes for like 30 years, and then all of a sudden, by accident, one of the P53 genes in one of those cells lining the lungs mutates because of the chemicals in the cigarettes. It mutates. And now the person's got just one copy of that gene, right? But a lot of times one copy of the P53 gene is enough to do the job, to protect you. It seems like nature's done that to us. We have, there are a lot of important things we have two of, right? Um. If you lose one, you're, you can get by. I mean, you have two eyes, if you lose one, you can get by. You have two hands, if you lose one, you can get by. Two kidneys, you can get by with one. Two nostrils, you get one plugged up, you can get by with the other. Like if you put stuff in your I know little kids sometimes will do that, put stuff in their nostrils. Why did they do that? I don't know. But if you have one copy of P53 in a cell, you can get by. But then if that person continues smoking for a few more years, what would happen if uh, that remaining copy of that gene in that cell got damaged? What? Yeah, if you had no working copies of the P53 gene in the <coughs> cell, if further smoke damaged the DNA in that cell, Without any working copies of P53, the cell cycle wouldn't pause here. It would continue on into the S phase, continue replicating damaged DNA, and then that cell could become a cancer cell. Now, if the P53 gene is mutated in one of the mutates, why does the other P53 stop? Why don't they fix that one? Why don't fix that one? That's a good question. A lot of times it works. Not all the time. It doesn't work all the time. It's not a perfect system. That's a, good, that's a good question. This is why somebody who has normal P53 genes can sometimes get cancer. I mean, it's not a perfect system. There's other things going on like how effective your immune system is and recognizing cells that have gone rogue and become cancer and wiping them out. There's a lot of other things going on. There's more to it than just this. But P53 works most of the time. The system works most of the time. In fact, I was reading about some research not long ago where a guy had can a patient had cancer, he had these solid tumors, and when they tested the tumor tissue, when they took a biopsy, took it back to the lab, they found that that tumor was made up of cells that didn't have any working P53 genes. They had been wiped out for some reason. And they then injected copies of P53 genes into the tumor, and the tumor over time shrunk down to practically nothing. I thought that was pretty cool. So it's just one area of research that cancer researchers are working on, P53. So, something to think about. So anyway, what's the moral of the story? <coughs> Thank you, P53 genes, and don't smoke. don't smoke. We know better in 2018, right? <laughs> and I've been reading that vaping has its bad qualities as well, so it's, it's not 100% safe. But anyway, don't mean to preach, but people need to know that. All right. Oh, something related to this. Raise your hand if you've ever, like, gone to the beach or worked outside all day in the summertime or whatever and gotten a really bad sunburn. Okay. Some of us, well, we all have this brown pigment in our skin, melanin. Some of us are blessed with more than others, right? 
Um, the more melanin you have in your skin, the darker your skin color. Melanin protects you from UV light. So the darker your skin color, the more protection you have. The less likely you're going to burn. Okay. Um, I'm looking around here and let me see. I would venture to say I think I have more melanin than you do. Uh, Gabby has more than I do, right? And uh, you probably have more than Gabby, right? Isn't it wonderful how we're all the same? The only difference is we just have all different amounts of melanin in our skin. Not a huge deal. Um, so anyway, there's a lot of important lessons you can learn from genetics, I think. But let's go back to sunburns. I remember one time I got a really bad sunburn, and um, boy, I was in agony. I was in agony, and it hurt for a few days. Nod your head, Jessica, you know what I'm talking about. Then after several more days, it started to itch like crazy. You ever experienced that? And then what happens? What do you notice over the next few You're days? Peeled. You're peeling like crazy. Uh, you feel like a reptile shedding its skin, right? All these dead skin cells start peeling off. Those are, you need to kind of be thankful for that. Those were cells that their DNA was damaged beyond repair by the sun. And the P53 genes in those cells instructed those cells to self-destruct, to undergo apoptosis. And now they're dead and they're, they're flaking off. That's why they died. Their DNA was damaged beyond repair by the sun. Now over time, you get enough sunburns over a time period, like decades or whatever, you could eventually get both copies of P53 and a particular skin cell damaged by the sun, then that skin cell loses the ability to examine its own DNA, check for damage, and if DNA in the nucleus is damaged, then it continues on through mitosis again and again. You could get skin cancer that way. So what's the moral of the story here? Don't tan. Don't tan. Don't tan. Wear sunscreen. Don't go to tanning booths or tanning beds. Or now I know a lot of people think, well, but I want to go to a tanning booth or tanning bed so I can have that really fine looking suntan when I go to the prom. Okay. The risk there is not zero, you guys. Isaac, are you telling us to get spray tans? Spray tans? Why even worry about the color of your skin? I mean, no, spray tans? I don't know about spray tans. Then you look like an Oompa Loompa. <laughs> right? <laughs> Wait, is that right, Oompa Loompa? Yeah, what's another Oompa Loompa? Say what? You know what Oompa Loompas are. Yeah, I'm trying to think about another one. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Moving right along. Okay. Thank your P53. Thank you. All right. Let's switch topics now. I want to talk about your telomeres a little bit. Okay. So page number nine. Let's switch topics. Raise your hand if you've ever heard of these. Telomeres. Telomeres are cool. They're like little protective caps on the tips of your chromosomes. Now, I think I have, oh yeah, here's a picture of somebody's chromosomes taken through a really high powered microscope. Those are yours. They could be yours. Yes. Chromosomes. Now, they were stained with a fluorescent stain that stained the telomeres uh, bright yellow. See the the tips of the chromosome, those are the telomeres. They're like little protective caps on the tips of your chromosomes. They kind of remind me of aglets. 
You know what aglets are. We've seen Phineas and Ferb. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? We've seen Phineas and Ferb. Have you ever seen that episode? They talk about aglets and Yeah, Phineas they make a whole song out of it. There's a song about it? I know, but there's a whole song. Oh my gosh, I need to get out more often. <laughs> No, you have to stay inside. I know. Oh, yeah, you have to stay inside to watch it. You need to watch Phineas. All right, I will be honest with you. True confession time, I have never seen that show. <laughs> now, see, I have a three-year-old grandson, and so I watch things like Paw Patrol. I love Paw Patrol. Uh, Daniel Tiger, those kind of things. He's a saint. So, anyway, maybe someday he'll get into Phineas and Ferb. Is it Ferb? Yeah. Or, whatever. Okay. <laughs> All right. The aglet, the plastic cap on the end of your shoelace. What's the function of that thing? What's what's it there for? Keep the shoelace. Yeah, to keep the shoelace from unraveling, because if those <coughs> aglets wear down, then you get this, right? And that's just a hassle. When your shoelaces unravel, you can't get them through the little eyelets. They didn't, make a song about that. Yeah. Yeah, right. they didn't make a song about that. Anyway, you don't want your shoelaces to get like that. That's just a hassle. So, now, your chromosomes. There's a telomere, let's say, right there. If your telomeres wear down, then your chromosomes are at risk of <coughs> unraveling and the DNA and the chromosomes becoming damaged. Now, Okay, again, why do you not want your DNA to get damaged? Cancer. Possibility for that cell to become a cancer cell. So you don't want your DNA to get damaged. You see why important uh, aglets are? I mean telomeres. They protect the ends of your chromosomes. Now here's the, uh, the downside of telomeres. Every time a cell goes through mitosis, they get worn down a little bit. With every mitosis division, they wear down a little bit. Now here's a picture of somebody's telomeres, enlarged. Okay, here's the chromosome. The orange cap on the ends, that's, those are the telomeres, but if you enlarge that orange cap, you can see that the telomere is a length of DNA that's orange. Well, in this picture, it's orange. Great question. No, it doesn't contain, the telomere doesn't contain like important gene information. <coughs> it's just extra DNA, repeated sequences of extra DNA up here. And its only function is to protect the important stuff, the blue stuff, okay, the blue DNA. But every time the cell divides, see that telomere wears down a little bit. So here's like here's a full length telomere on a chromosome. See every time that cell goes through mitosis, the telomere gets worn down a little bit more, a little bit more. Eventually, when it gets worn down to where with one more cell division, the telomere is going to be worn away to nothing. There's something in the cell that tells that cell no more mitosis for you. Okay? That's a good thing. When the telomeres are worn down so short that they're going to be gone with one more cell division, there's something in the cell, not sure what it is, that tells that cell, no more mitosis. Leave the cell cycle and go into retirement. Okay? So what happens is the cell exits the cell cycle and goes into this stage here called G0 or senescence or you might call it retirement and then the cell just sits on the porch in a rocking chair for the rest of its life. Gets fat and lazy, uh, doesn't do mitosis anymore, it's in senescence. Now if a cell is in senescence that means it's not doing mitosis, it's not making new youthful cells by mitosis to replace those that wear out in the body. So I'm telling you, some days I can feel it. I have more cells in my body in senescence than you guys do. Right? Because 
I've been doing mitosis for about 64 years. You guys have been doing mitosis how long? 17 years? 16, 17 years. So my telomeres compared to yours are a lot shorter. But my mama's are shorter than mine, right? You all know Mr. Herbert? Yeah. His are shorter than mine. He's 10 years older than I am. Now, we laugh about this, Mr. Herber and I. Every once in a while, he'll see me in the hall, and he'll ask something about telomeres. So he knows I'm not talking behind his back. We, we joke about telomeres and stuff. In fact, I think he's discovered the secret to long telomeres. I Mr. Herber's discovered the secret of eternal life. By That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I think, well, you wonder sometimes. I've seen him beat stud male students in push-ups and pull-ups pull-ups and arm wrestling i've seen him sprinting down the hall there goes a blur who was it? oh mr herbert he's headed to the office or something um, he's amazing he really is now part of the part of the secret is um he takes care of himself right eats right exercise and all that stuff plus the other part of the secret is you pick your genes carefully. When you inherit your genes, you pick them carefully. Uh, that's impossible, right? Hard to do. You can't pick your parents, right? That has a lot to do with it. So anyway, you see, Eric, I've got cells all the time going into senescence, more than you. See, you have a lot more cells that are actively dividing the cell cycle, doing mitosis to create new youthful cells. But the more cells in your body that go into senescence, the fewer you have left behind to do mitosis and make new youthful cells. Make sense? Sort of, that makes sense? Um, now, We already answered this, right? Uh -huh. What happens with telomeres during each mitosis division? They get worn down. Now, if you look at the next page, mm, oh, I want to tell you about an enzyme that's kind of cool. Its name is telomerase. Telomerase, that's the name of an enzyme. Now, let's back up here. You guys may remember this. DNA makes RNA, RNA makes protein molecules. Do you remember that from biology or honors biology? Yeah. Most of the proteins in your body are enzymes. Most of the proteins in your body are enzymes. They're chemicals that do work in the cells, okay? And one of the really important enzymes that you have is called telomerase. Now, anytime you see a big word in biology or biochemistry, it has ace on the end, that tells you that it's a what? It's an enzyme. If you see a big word in biology with ace on the end, you know it's an enzyme. So telomerase. Does anybody know what that enzyme does? It builds up the telomeres. It builds them up. That's what that enzyme does. It builds up telomeres. The only problem is, oh, and you've got telomerase genes in every cell in your body the genes that make this enzyme telomerase, the enzyme that builds up the telomeres. But in all the cells in your body, that gene is turned off. <coughs> That's kind of a bummer, right? In my skin cells, for example, the telomerase genes are turned off. Why? Pardon? Why? Well, that's a good question. The ultimate philosophical answer to why I don't know, but if your telomerase genes were on in all of your body cells, theoretically you would not age. 
because your telomeres would remain full length and the cells would never go into senescence and you'd always have new youthful cells being made by mitosis to replace the ones that wear out. You would be theoretically eternally youthful, I think. Why would you do that? Well, because it's really, it's really complicated and hard to do. But I'll bet you in the future somebody might figure out how to come up with something called telomerase therapy, where maybe they could get telomerase enzyme into your body cells. Telomerase therapy. Now this is a dream of the future. And maybe not make you live forever, but maybe you could live to be like 250. Or t okay, 200. I don't know. And, and have a high quality of life, not be, you know, all hunched over and, and um, aged. Can you imagine that? Um, kind of interesting. I don't know if I'd want to live that long and pay taxes that many extra years. <laughs> when would retirement be? I feel like that uh, seems kind of expensive. It would probably be very expensive, and some people would be able to afford it, obviously, and some people would not. Would health insurance cover it? I doubt it. No. I don't know. That'd be interesting. But uh, anybody have any idea who that is? Probably not. I want to introduce you to a very important scientist. Her name is Dr. Carol Greider, and she discovered telomerase. Okay. So, important scientist. She's the one who discovered that enzyme. The enzyme that builds up telomeres. So, imagine if we could someday get telomerase into your cells. Imagine. Ladies, uh, something like this might be possible for you in your future. Maybe live to be 200, still be energetic and athletic and all that stuff. Or guys, maybe this could be you someday uh, after telomerase therapy. Bull vaulting. <laughs> no. Well, I was going to say, I think there may be people in this building who have already discovered the secrets of telomerase therapy. Check it out. Okay? Maybe. No, I don't think so. I think. And, and I, actually, I was reading the other day that uh, there's some evidence now that a proper kind of a diet and a proper amount of exercise and a proper amount of sleep each night can actually a little bit lengthen telomeres or at least keep them from wearing down so fast. So, you know, there's some practical information I think we can get. Now, I already told you all the cells in your body are not making telomerase enzymes. The telomerase genes in your body cells are turned off. But there are a few exceptions. There are a few cells actually in your body where the telomerase genes are on. Does anybody know where they are? No, that's a good guess. Nope. By the way, most of your brain cells are in senescence. Yeah. No. No. Good guesses. Nope. You guys are good guessers. No. In your ovaries and testes. The telomerase. The telomerase genes are turned on. Think of it like a lever. Your, your telomerase genes are turned on in your ovaries and testes. And as a result, every egg cell that's produced, every sperm cell that's produced, has chromosomes with full length telomeres. Doesn't that make sense? Because when a new baby is conceived, wouldn't you want it to have to start out life with full length telomeres? And so when a baby's born, that baby has really long telomeres compared to yours, right? Doesn't that make sense? So that's a good thing. So the babies that are like born and then they age super rapidly, is that because their telomeres are 
That's an excellent question. Those babies that are born with that really rare disease called progeria, where they age real fast, pretty sad. Um, that's due to a single gene pair that's mutated, separate and apart from all of this. But when you look at their telomeres on their chromosomes, they do happen to be a lot shorter. So everything about their body is accelerating. But it's originally caused by just a single gene pair that's not working. And so, yeah, that disease is called progeria. Oh, there's another place where you'll find cells where their telomerase genes are on and they're making telomerase. And those cells are essentially immortal. They don't die. They keep on living. And we're talking cancer cells. Most cancer cells <coughs> within themselves, within the cancer cells, have figured out how to turn the telomerase gene on to keep their telomeres long so they never go into senescence, so they keep doing mitosis again and again and again out of control. And that's cancer. Um, Kaden, were you going to ask something? Yeah. Um, is it possible to have a mutation? Yeah, you could have, it's possible to have a mutation where you might have a cell where the telomerase gene mutates somehow and turns back on. Theoretically, that's possible. And then that cell would probably keep dividing and dividing. Now, unfortunately, um, most of the time that would result in cancer. Well, because that cell would just keep dividing and, and uncontrollably without slowing down or stopping when it's supposed to. There's a delicate balance. You'd kind of like your telomeres to be long, but you also want to keep the cancer under control. Does that make any sense? There was a lady who died in the early 1950s. Oh, there's a poster back there, Henrietta Lacks. She died in the 1950s of cervical cancer. It was kind of a controversy because the doctors collected cancer cells from her before she died. They started growing them in petri dishes of nutrient solution in the lab. And they noticed they kept dividing and dividing and making more and more. And they would fill up the petri dishes and then they had to transfer them into new petri dishes. They kept growing and growing and growing. And to this day, even though she died in the early 1950s, hang on, that's not us. Her cancer cells are still living in laboratories all over the world. They're called HeLa cells, H-E-L-A. Her name was Henrietta Lacks. They're basically immortal. As long as you keep feeding them in Petri dishes, they keep growing. They don't die because they have figured out how to turn their own telomerase genes on. The telomerase are long, the telomeres are long in her cancer cells. They never go into senescence, they just keep dividing. Hang on a second, not yet, hang on. That's something I want to tell you. Looking at this poster, it says, they have grown so many of her cancer cells since the early 1950s. They now would outweigh 150 Empire State Bowl. They're immortal. They sound nice today. 